Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and for this episode of Tank of the Week, episode 23, we're going to look at, uh, well, Bob, and how our freshwater sponge has been doing. So, something kind of strange happened as Bob grew out, and if you'll recall, I'll, I'll flash back to something who started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. He was getting this huge kind of mass, almost like a Rorschach looking ink blot thing. And then uh, the the substrate layer here, Bob came into contact with the substrate and apparently did not like that. <laughs> it just as as the, the colony of organisms that makes a freshwater sponge kept growing outward, it was it was getting a bigger and bigger foot and not really growing uh, you know, vertically off the glass, which it will eventually do, came in contact with a substrate and was really, really unhappy. And you can vaguely see it here, but we'll zoom in in a second, and you'll see that Bob is quite a lot smaller. Um, it, quite a lot of the colony, like, died back, basically. And for a little while, I was actually worried that um, I wouldn't be able to keep the sponge long term. And I still don't really know if I can keep the sponges long term. And it's really probably accurate to say sponges because it's a colony of organisms. It's not one living being. We, we talked about this in the previous one. We'll, we'll put that up in the corner so you can get a, a basic intro of what freshwater sponges are. But there's something interesting. So let's zoom in and look at Bob really close. And here you're going to see uh, this kind of weird pattern, like just like a almost like a ball of snot or something. I know that's not the most uh, appealing description, but that's kind of what Bob looks like right now. Now, if we take that back, you would think, oh no, something's terribly wrong, but this is actually bigger than Bob was for a little while. Uh, Bob had was kind of like something the size of a dime and something the size of a quarter uh, with a teeny tiny string connecting the two between them of, of the, the sponges, like, organism colony. And started growing back out, and that was, that was great, right? That's some, that feels good. And then I started noticing, well, this stuff. And as you see this shot here, this is a piece of Cryptochorin spiralis that I was originally going to move out of this tank, and now I can't. And as you can see, Along this top of the cryptocurrine, there's a bunch of like what looks like green fuzz, almost like a fungus. But it's hard to see with the camera because I can only zoom so well with what I have as equipment. But to the naked eye, you can see it's porous and, well, spongy. Somehow part of Bob has moved, propagated itself, however you want to call this, because it is a colony, so as it grows, it is technically propagating. But this is another sponge somewhere else within the tank. And there's so... Well, this one, too. You can see this is a little harder to focus on with my camera, but there's another glob that is completely separate, does not touch that part, on a different part of the cryptocurrine. So... There's three sponges now. Oh, wait, there's a fourth. Check this out. This might be the best shot where you can really see how porous, because it has these three massive visible pores, and it kind of a few extras, but there's three really obvious pores to the sponge here. So what, what does this mean for us in this kind of experiment of keeping the freshwater sponges? What this means is that we now have enough of the, the mass of the sponge, not just that big foot, to be able to better identify which species of freshwater sponge this is. Now, for those who haven't seen the freshwater sponge video, I highly recommend you watch it. It's linked up in the corner. Um, there are something like 30 species of sponge just in the United States, and this is a freshwater United States sponge. It came from my water system. They can naturally occur here in the Northwest, and, and other areas can have this too. It's not exclusive to our area, but it's I've seen more cases of it. I've had several other local hobbyists who have had freshwater sponges slowly grow out in their tanks, 
Uh, and the light, they're, they're not going to affect you because it's, you know, a single or a couple organisms in drinking water. That's never going to affect a human. But over time, they can slowly propagate in something like an aquarium attached to a solid surface that is a safe place and grow and grow and grow. So we have multiple sponges. I don't feel safe moving them. They're all going to stay in here for quite a while until I can do some research on, figure out exactly what species this is. It has been surprisingly hard to tell just with what limited um, understanding I have from a scientific perspective of trying to do the identification. But uh, I'll, I'll be diving a little more in depth with that here soon now that we're, we're into, the, into 2020 and I have a small period of time at work where I'm going to have slightly more free time and be less like working like a crazy person <laughs> who's... Who literally just like works come home work more on youtube and then go to sleep um but that'll give me a little bit of time to research what bob is and once we know what kind of sponge bob is sponge spongebob it's like we did this on purpose to have fun anyway i'm sorry i can't i can't help it i giggle at the dumb stuff but uh once we know kind of what species bob is it becomes easier to identify what's necessary to propagate the sponge, to get the sponge larger. And, um, you know, can we move some of the sponge to different tanks safely and have other sponge colonies? Or maybe more importantly, is it even possible to take one of these sponges and move it to an entirely different other hobbyist? say, uh, like Joel or someone like that, like one of my friends that I know in the area, I don't know that they would ship, but who knows, maybe eventually we'll figure out that this kind of sponge could ship and other people in the country could try like steadily growing Bob, which to me would be insanely cool. Now, yes, it's hard for me to ship things, blah, 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 all the usuals. This doesn't mean that I have guppies immediately for sale or something chill out guys i know a lot of you are waiting on those but it's one of those things where like I, I just struggle to get the extra time beyond my actual job and my job of youtube uh and and really youtube is all done in hours where the post office isn't open anyway uh, i i do most of this at night like you can tell i have to have an extra light on over this way because it's night and the, to get enough light so that you can see me in this room or my camera doesn't go crazy, I, I have to have a spare light on. But um, anyway, so I just kind of wanted to do a short update where we have one more tank of the week coming up next week uh, as of the time of filming this, which I'm batch filming a few things. Uh, I know what episode 24 is and we are going to need a bigger tank. Plain and simple. I... We're gonna need something big. Big. So, with that being said, uh, what I'd love to know down in the comments is... Do you think this is interesting? Is it interesting that, like, the paranoia of Bob possibly dying and then all of a sudden seeing, like, oh, there's three other Bobs in the tank now. Is that interesting to you, or just the the way that things have occurred with this sponge, or is it just maybe the texture of how that how that sponge looks in that last shot or one of the other shots? Is it is that something that's just interesting? Like I I'm one of those people who um, you know things with weird visual or actual tactile textures can be very interesting to me. Uh, you guys saw me with the bright water media, so I, I play with that. I still play with that stuff. <laughs> as stupid as that sounds, but. Um, it, you know, what what is interesting about this to you? Because Bob has been kind of popular. There's a small group of people. You know who you are. You really, really like Bob the Freshwater Sponge. Uh, and that that is endlessly amusing to me because you folks are, are fantastic. But, um, you know, I just want to know down in the comments, like, what's interesting about this? What What is the, you know, when we find the next step, we know what species it is. Or, or what have you, is that something you want to see more on? Let me know down in the comments. That would be fantastic. If you've enjoyed Tank of the Week as we get close to ending Tank of the Week, uh, you know, hit the like button, give it a little thumbs up. 
if you're excited for the new things to come or maybe whatever that thing I keep hinting at is. Again, possibly just tap that like button, hit that little subscribe, maybe even tap a tap tap that little bell. That way you know every time a video comes out what's going forward and you never miss whether it's a community tab post that tells the future of this channel or some super secret behind the scenes stuff, uh, you know, whatever it is, you'll get all that stuff if you have the, the all notifications bell thing turned on. Just ring ring the bell, man. You know, I, I can't legally play the song I want to because, you know, copyright strike stuff will hit me like an avalanche. If you, uh, if you can't stand this content, you are the that one guy who always leaves me a dislike. First off, thank you. Go ahead, hit that button twice. Because I'd miss you if you didn't. I really would. <laughs> As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome.